not win. That's our message today. In order for us to work together, we want to let people know here in Charleston, we are going to fight for you. And we have done it. We have proven it today. I am so proud of the people that have fought this battle. And I want to say, we won. We won because we believe in love. And hate will never win. We'll never fix the hate. And here again, I thank you. I thank you all. I stand here today proud. Proud for that mother that stepped up and decided that her children were not going to be uh, part of, of something that, that she didn't believe in. Uh, they just went out for an, a, an outing in the park and ultimately wound up on the internet, her children on the internet, uh, pro in a promotion for the Confederacy, the Confederate flag, and the South Carolina Secessionist Party. Now, it's one thing I know. You can mess with me, but you can't mess with my children. And that mother said, you're not going to mess with my children because down the road, my children are going to be able to know for certain, should those images ever pop up. My mother not only fought for me, she fought for me and won. Is this the end of all? No. We've got more battle to pursue. But we want it known that those battles, battles against racism, against classism, against sexism, here in this community, we're going to fight until we win. Because the future of our community depends on the fight that we wage right now against those same entities. So for whomever might think that we're pushovers here, not here in the low country, not here in Charleston, <laughs> South Carolina. <laughs> That's the truth. We ain't playing because enough truly is enough. This is, there's no place for hate here. Thank you. Any questions? Uh, yes, I do. I, I want to know a couple things. One is, um, can they reorganize under a different name? Is there any concern that they will after they're dissolved in six months? So a big, a big part of this case was to take away their organizing power. And so they have already disappeared off of Facebook and social media, uh, which was part of the agreement for us to come in and, and agree to resolve the case. Uh, of course, individuals in America are free to organize. Uh, they won't be using the name South Carolina Secessionist Party. Mr. Bessinger is not allowed to reorganize the group under any other name pursuant to the judge's order. Uh, but of course, people with hate in their heart are free to stand on a corner uh, and look like lunatics. But in this case, rather than presenting themselves as a political party, they will just be lunatics on a corner. Uh, and that is a big step. <laughs> uh, also, I'm curious because you mentioned it during, to the judge that, that you actually were threatened on some level. Can you tell us what happened? Sure. So when we brought uh, this suit, uh, my wife and I, uh, Kelsey Willie, uh, became targets uh, of this group. We were posted online uh, as being racist ourselves, uh, allegedly uh, as being part of uh, all sorts of groups that we are not a part of, um, and and were attacked. Our business pages, my our law firm pages. Uh, on social media were attacked by these folks who were coming on and saying derogatory things, uh, which of course we expected, uh, but nonetheless uh, does have an impact and you do have to deal with that sort of thing. Thankfully, no one will ever have to deal with it from this group again, uh, as there is no secessionist party that has 25,000 followers on Facebook as of this moment. And at the end, the judge made a statement saying, you know, it's February of 2019. We shouldn't be dealing with these issues. And if everyone could just love each other, this wouldn't happen. So how do you feel about that statement? Well, I agree with the judge. As I walked to court this morning, I actually walked around the point of the battery. And there's a little plaque there that talks about the largest siege in warfare ever. And it was 1863 to 1865 at Fort Sumter, which is just off the coast behind us here. And you think about how long that has been that we are still fighting this battle against hate. They have been beaten at every turn, but they still rise. And with the, what's going on in our country today, they are empowered, they are reinvigorated, and they are being brought into the mainstream. And it's up to all of us, collectively and together, to speak out against it, 
Uh, and as I always say, there's no action like the civil action because when you hit people in the pocketbooks, yep, you it. get their attention. And so that's what we've done today. Mr. Smith, you had a bit of an interesting history with Mr. Bessinger. Um, can you talk a little bit about that? It hasn't been entirely adversarial, correct? But it, it's been. It's been always <laughs> adversarial. <laughs> okay. My apologies. I, I was always. another. Uh, I think we here in the Low Country. We battle Bessinger throughout the whole state. We when they set up the flags over the over our highway overpass, we fought them. When they came to our parades, we fought them. Let me remind you, the good people of this this the Low Country has turned them around at every turn. They were not allowed to be at the parades. The people stood up, and why I'm saying this is because we as people. Blacks and whites, we stood up against this because we did not want it. It's time for us to move on. That seizure in 1861, the 1865, it's gone. It is never coming back. We as a group of people will survive and live together. My relationship with Best University was contentious at every stage because I believe in America. I believe that the hard fought freedoms that we had, we will never go back. And most importantly, I believe that we, collectively, blacks, whites, Jews, and Gentiles, can work together to solve these problems. Judge said something. This is 2019. 2019, and I can proudly say we were involved in a battle conversation. We were involved in a battle, and this young man helped us fight it. And I'm so happy to be part of knowing you are doing a fantastic job. This is what we're talking about. Every time they come out there, we're going to hit them civilly. Yes. We're going to hit them in the pockets. And we got this bull runner here, Doc Scott. Wow. I am some pleasure standing with you. It's a pleasure. And of course, we can't forget the people that stood. <laughs> What, we're, what I want to say is that, yes, all of us, it's not with one man. It was all of us out here fighting the justice, fighting for the cause, fighting that we are, will not go back in the time. We'll move forward. And I thank you. Anything else? Questions. Um, so you're mentioning they, are, do you all have any um, concerns about any other groups that promote the Confederacy? Sure. So you're... Your, your paper, the Post and Courier, uh, ran an article not too long ago about the proliferation of hate groups. And the fact is that, uh, in my opinion, the South Carolina Secessionist Party was a hate group. And these hate groups are coming out of the woodwork because of what's going on in our country right now where hate is normalized. Um, and there will be more, make no mistake. They already exist, others will come up. But in South Carolina, this was the most widespread, largest uh, group uh, that existed, almost 30,000 members nationwide that they could organize literally with one message. And they did that, and they did that uh, effectively. They won't be able to do that anymore. So while there are other hate groups out there, we do believe that this one had the largest impact uh, locally. Uh, and just as a sort of personal uh, affront, Charleston is where the secessionist movement started. It is where it ended. Uh, and for them to come out of our community, we thought it was important that we do something. These folks behind me are on the battery every week uh, with, with signs, racism uh, sucks, you know, American flags, all of that sort of thing. Um, and so this is really just the end uh, for them. But an another group will, will appear, make no mistake, and they'll be dealt with accordingly. So. Any, did they express any remorse at all to you guys as far as have you seen that maybe a little bit of a life is opened by kind of the back and forth? Yes, yeah, so, so, so I will say uh, Mr. Bessinger uh, did uh, make an apology uh, to the family, uh, to Ms. Green and to her children. Uh, he has made comments uh, recently uh, in the media uh, and as part of our order, which he agreed to, uh, that the Secessionist Party, while he started it, he says, uh, to celebrate heritage, he recognizes uh, that the folks who were, had racist motives and were interested in that uh, were, were no longer a minority 
uh, in that group, no longer a minority. And so uh, he he did recognize that uh, himself. We've not spoken, you know, with any of the other members or anything like that, but he, he did recognize that.